Hi, in this video I have the Lalela laptop power bank. The model number is GW17500C and I'm going to unbox it, show you what it comes with and how it works. In the box you will get the leaflet, the power bank, there's a USB-C power delivery cable, AC-DC adapter to charge the power bank, and over here are the DC jacks for different laptops. And lastly, I have this fly lead, which is used to connect the power bank to any one of these laptop connectors. Right, just having a look at the size of the unit, it's only 16 centimeters long and just over eight centimeters wide, just over two centimeters thick. If you're familiar with the Ramos power banks, this is the 30,000 milliamp hour. And just to show you the Lalela side by side to give you an idea of the size. Right, on the right hand side is a power button. When I power it up, you should see the bar LEDs over here showing you the charge capacity which is still available in the unit. At the moment, it is fully charged. On the top, I have a USB-A output. I have these two DC jacks. This one over here is used for charging the battery bank. Here is the AC adapter and to charge the unit, I just plug in that DC jack into the DC1 or the input as it's labeled there on the face of the unit. Right, now I'm now charging the unit. Notice the LED on the AC-DC adapter is red. When the power bank is fully charged, this will go green. For example, there it is now fully charged and it has turned green. So it means I can now unplug this because my power bank is fully charged. Right, now the DC2 output over here is used for any one of these laptop connectors. Now, let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to connect the supplied fly lead and notice that I use the thin size of the barrel connector. Notice there I'm plugging into the DC2. And now I can select any one of these adapters for any type of laptop that I may have. So I'm going to demonstrate firstly using a Dell laptop. Now on the side of these little adapters, it actually says the brand. For example, over here it says for Dell. So I'm going to pull this one out and notice that I can just plug in this DC jack into the back of this adapter. Now this is the standard Dell size DC jack for the Dell laptops. Right, so here's a Dell laptop and there on the side I can plug in my little connector. So I have my DC jack to the Dell adapter and I'm now effectively charging this laptop. Right, so at the bottom here, it is showing that my laptop is currently being charged. And something that's interesting is that the unit does not need to be switched on. For example, the minute I plug it in to the output port of this power bank, it immediately starts charging the laptop. Notice when I unplug it, it now is no longer charging the laptop. I plug it back in and it is charging the laptop, whether the power button on the side is turned on or off. There the bar graph LEDs are on and it is still charging my laptop. And even when I turn it off, notice that it is still charging my laptop. Now over here I have a Lenovo laptop. And if I go through the variety of connectors here, and if I look in the little leaflet, it shows me all the laptops that this unit is compatible with. But what I want to bring to attention is that the top one says M for Lenovo. But in my case, my brand new Lenovo uses this type of jack. So even though the little leaflet recommended this one, what you need to do is match up the closest jack with the unit that you have. So for example, my Lenovo is probably matched to this one over here. And it says G. So all I'm doing is I'm plugging in this fly lead and I'm plugging the other side into the DC out. And now over here on the side, I can plug in and I see that it is a close match. I also notice that the little charge LED is on telling me the laptop is charging. Right, so if your laptop is not fitting according to the key over here, just do trial and error to locate the correct terminal or the correct plug by matching it up, seeing which is the closest fit. Right, now over here, it also has a power delivery port and this is the USB-C output. Now the unit does come with a USB-C to USB-C cable. So I'm now plugging into the USB-C output and now I'm gonna use the USB-C to charge my cell phone. However, in order for the USB-C to work, I need to power on the device by switching it on on the side. So I now can plug in the USB-C into my cell phone. Right, it is now charging my cell phone. Now because this is a power delivery port, which means it should be at the laptop charging voltage, 
I could potentially charge a laptop with USB-C power delivery from this cable. Now over here I have a 17 inch laptop. This is the Dell Precision range. And it can be charged by either one of these power delivery ports or both. So if I plug in the USB-C on the side here, then I must make sure the battery bank is turned on on the side. I've plugged in the USB-C over there and there I've connected it to my laptop on the USB-C power delivery port. Your laptop must be uh, able to be charged from USB-C, which in this case, this laptop is. Now, the only thing is, is that this is a large laptop and unfortunately it is not charging this laptop. The laptop comes up with a warning saying battery is not charging. I assume for smaller laptops, it should be working. But in my case, with this large laptop, it is not working. And there is the notice that I get. It says PC isn't charging. Now there's a USB-A port on the side here, which can also be used for charging your cell phone. And over here, I've got a little USB port monitor, which can measure the voltage and current coming out of the port, and I will measure it for you. So I've plugged in my little USB volt and current meter, and now I'm going to attempt to charge my cell phone. I'm connecting it to this cell phone, which has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And over here, you can see that the voltage is 5 amps and the current is building up to almost 2 amps, 1.9 amps. I'm satisfied with that because even when I connect it to a dedicated charger that is over 20 watts, I also get a maximum of 2 amps when it's at 5 volts. It's not going to cascade the voltage higher, it's just going to stay at 5 volts. So over there my cell phone is currently at 45% and it is currently charging. However, I do note that it doesn't stay at the 1.9 amp. It tends to drop a bit. So at the moment, it is now at just under 1 amp. But it is still charging my cell phone. All right, I've plugged in another cell phone, which can tell me if it goes into fast charging mode or not. And in this case, the current is about 0.5, 0.6 amps. But unfortunately, the phone is not flipping over into the fast charging mode. However, if I need the fast charging, I can just use the USB-C and there the phone has gone into the fast charging mode. Right, just going through the specifications as stated in the leaflet. Right, the DC output voltage is for this terminal over here and it says output 19.5 volts, 3 amps. That is this output over here, the smaller DC jack. It says DC2, and this is the one where we use that fly lead to connect to the adapter for your laptop. One of these different adapters for the variety of laptops which this unit can power up. So that voltage is 19.5 volts at 3 amps. There is a second specification here which says 24 volts at 3 amps. Now this DC input over here, it says DC1 input, is actually a dual personality port and can also be used as an output. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how this one works and I'll even test it to show you whether it meets the specification or not. This one is the DC1 and this one is what they mean when they say 24 volts at 3 amps. And it's over here and that's why it says output 24 volts at 3 amps and the reason why it says input is because it's a dual personality port meaning it can be a charging port and it can be a discharging port to power up one of your devices. Right then we move on to USB-A it's 5 volts at 2.4 amps that is this port over here this is the one I was using and measuring the voltage and current then lastly we have the USB-C power delivery port ranging from 5 volts at 3 amps all the way up to 20 volts at 3 amps depending on what device you use will depend on what the voltage and current is now a very important note is this at the bottom here it says only use one of the four output ports DC1, DC2, USB-A and USB-C to discharge at a time. That means that according to this leaflet, I may not use it like this because over here I'm charging a cell phone, connecting to my laptop and using the USB power delivery port over here to charge another cell phone. What the manual is saying is that I can only use one of these at a time. So either I'm using that or that or that or that. Right, now the last thing I'm going to just demonstrate is this 24 volts at 3 amps and that is the DC one. Now according to the manual, this port over here can also be an output port. So I'm going to test it and I'm actually going to measure the current. Right, now the unit says that it can provide about two and a half hours of capacity. It does say depending on the device powered. And I'd like to just test uh, the discharge rate 
of the unit. Now it's fully charged, there is the charger, it's green, so I can unplug that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this up with about a one, one and a half amp load, depending on uh, the resistors here. And I'm going to measure the current and I'm going to measure the voltage. Now in this case, I'm just going to use a little jack here. Earlier I said that this port over here can also be used. Now in this case, I'm going to be using this one over here and I have my DC jack, so I'm just going to plug it in. Right now this DC jack, I'm going to hardwire it to this little bank of resistors here, which is going to be my load. And the reason I'm using this is it's a stable load, so it'll remain the same throughout the test. And I've connected it to my amp meter here. So this is going to measure the current. And I'll also take a voltage measurement over here. And I'm going to let this discharge for some time. And while it's doing that, I'm going to just measure how long it takes to discharge, maybe halfway, or let's see how far we get. So I'm going to put the timer over here. And I'm going to just connect this and start the test. Right, press play and it's pulling 1.4 amps, so it's a fair load, although that's only half the maximum current. So I'm only pulling close to half. So this would be on a half load test. I uh, wanna see how it behaves. And there we go, I'm pulling 1.38 amps. So the voltage at the moment, there it is, it's 28 point, call it 28.5 volts. Right, so if I times the voltage with the current, I get a power of 39.3 watts. So this is definitely not the maximum power that this unit can uh, provide, but uh, let's see how it goes. So this is uh, close to a 40 watt load. Just under 12 minutes, it's dropped one bar. And a quick current measurement, it has dropped to 1.25 amps. And at about 40 minutes, it's ready to drop a second bar. Right, having a quick check, it's at 1 hour and 31 minutes, just doing a current measurement. The current has dropped. It is now 1.18 amps. And the output voltage has also dropped, and it is now 23.7 volts. Right, now at about 1 hour and 57 minutes, the current is 1.14 amps and the voltage is 22.8 amps, a power of 26 watts. Right, it was just over 2 hours, 2 hours and 4 minutes and the battery bank has just died at this point. Right, I'm just going to test how long it takes to charge the unit. I'm not going to connect a load to the unit while it's charging. I just want to see how long the unit takes to charge. So I'm going to plug it in now and it is completely empty after that discharge test. So it's been plugged in now and I'm going to restart the timer and there we go. Right, I've switched it on. You can see that the light is there at the bottom. Right, so it took three hours and eight minutes to fully recharge from being completely discharged. Right, the final test is to just see what happens if there is a dead short applied to one of these output terminals. That could happen if maybe the cable was cut by mistake, or maybe if I was plugging into a laptop that was faulty and the laptop had a short circuit on the input. So what happens to the battery bank when there's a short circuit applied? So I'm just going to apply the short circuit. I'm just going to use that connector there. Right, so I'm going to short out the battery bank. There will be a spark because this is uh, up to about 3 amps according to the specifications. Right, so there was the spark. Notice that the unit is off. If I try to connect my USB on the side here, and even when I try and power it on, nothing is happening. It's completely offline, look at that. However, in order to get this unit back to normal, I have to insert the charging cable, the AC adapter cable, and once I insert the AC adapter cable, I can now reset the device. And if I plug in my cell phone, there we back in business the device is now still working so it does have an overcurrent protection which is great all right so my final thoughts on the unit well overall it works pretty well they claimed it can provide 2.5 hours and also they claimed that it is almost 65 watt hours and according to my calculation we started the discharge test with a power of almost 40 watts and then towards the end, uh, almost at two hours, it had dropped to 26 watts. If it was a 65 watt hour battery, this is about what I would expect because either I get 65 watts per hour or in my case, I ran it at about a half load, which is about 32 watts. 
and that's kind of between these two and it did work for uh, just over two hours. So overall, yes, it did deplete uh, significantly, but that is the nature of batteries and they do do that. It was able to charge my phone, although it doesn't offer the fast charge. For example, over here I've got a Romos battery bank and if I plug in my phone to one of the USBs, it can convert the port to a fast charging port, so just be aware of that. But then I can also use the USB-C as a fast charging port for a cell phone. The laptop function worked pretty well. Uh, just keeping in mind that obviously larger laptops are more power hungry and in this case I was unable to charge my big Dell laptop from the USB-C output. But I think for most people using smaller laptops and all these adapters it will work fine using this port over here and it was able to keep my battery at the charge it was although I would need to test this repeatedly over the next few months to make a comprehensive decision. Right, so my final thoughts on the unit. Well, yes, I quite like the unit. Um, something that is strange is that this power button only works for these two outputs. So in my mind, the power button should be near these two outputs. So these two outputs should actually be close to each other and maybe some signage to tell you that. Because these two in the middle are on irrespective of whether the power button is pressed. So I just think there could be some improvement in the logical layout over here. Uh, another concern is that the DC1 voltage in the specification says 24 volts at 3 amps, but when I did my load test, I was getting 28 volts. So just be aware of that. If you are plugging it into a sensitive device, the voltage is higher than the specification rated over here. So overall, I quite like the unit. I like that it didn't overheat when I was doing any of my tests. And even when I charged it, the unit did not overheat. It actually stayed relatively cool. All right. Thanks for watching and cheers.